What's up guys, Inspect the Gadget here and today we're going to be doing an inspection of the LG Optimus G Pro. So let's get inspecting. So the Optimus G Pro is LG's answer to Samsung's Galaxy Note 2. And it's a pretty good one too. With its Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 SoC, it rocks a quad-core 1.7 GHz Crate 300 CPU along with the Adreno 320 GPU. It rocks a 2.1 megapixel front-facing camera along with a 13 megapixel rear shooter capable of shooting 1080p HD video. And although the G Pro is made of plastic like its competitor, one neat feature that sets it apart is the LED home button that changes colors depending on the situation. Another thing that sets it apart from the competition is the ability for the home screen to be used in landscape mode. Pretty awesome. However, you might find it difficult to operate the Optimus G Pro if you don't have big hands like mine. I found it a bit hard to touch all four corners. Of course, the Optimus G Pro runs on Android's 4.1.2 Jelly Bean, so that's pretty neat. And nearly all of the Android accoutrements run as flawlessly as you'd expect on such a beast of a device. Call quality was great as I could hear callers clearly and they could hear me just fine. The know-it-all Google Now still preempted my every thought and when I needed to ask a question, it delivered instantly as always. And I found this was about the same with every Google app I used on the Optimus G Pro. I mean, everything was as fluid as water with no hiccups whatsoever. I mean, Google Books still performed as always. Pretty awesome page turn animations here. And of course, that handy dandy dictionary whenever you need clarification. Google Plus still kept me abreast on what was going on in my circles and I found a pretty neat uh, history of the Android OS illustration. Gmail kept me updated and I found that I even got notifications faster than some of my other devices here. And even more processor intensive apps like Google Earth rendered smoothly without any hiccups. So you gotta love that. The YouTube app kept me up to date on my tech news and reviews. Plug subscribe to inspect the gadget. And a welcome addition to the Google Sphere is Google's $7.99 a month music app. However, I did notice while listening to music and watching movies on Google's Play Movies app that the sound was a bit tinny and not as dynamic and loud as I had experienced on other devices. And when you want to use your favorite third-party apps, you can just head on over to the Google Play Store with its over 900,000 apps. Pretty awesome. I went ahead and picked up my favorite third-party app, Netflix, and aside from the aforementioned sound issue, the picture quality was great, with the colors pretty close to natural, although I did notice that the contrast ratio wasn't as good as I'd experience on other devices. I also enjoyed my favorite third-party Twitter app, Falcon Pro, which is now just a widget. And of course, I had to give Modern Combat 4 a run on the Optimus G Pro, and of course it performed as awesome as you'd expect. From MC4 to Real Racing 3, frame rates were high, the action was awesome, and you'd never forget a gaming experience like this on a 5.5 inch screen with 401 pixels per inch. And that's the first thing you notice when you power on the Optimus G Pro. The screen is just a pleasure to look at. Of course, clearing out tasks is pretty much the same as on any other Android device, but I did notice that expanding notifications didn't work as well as it normally does on other Android devices. So, go figure. With a solid OS like Android's 4.1.2 Jelly Bean, it's no wonder Android apps run flawlessly. So, what about LG's apps? Well, I found LG's web browser to be pretty awesome, and I really like the sharing tray that slides up from the bottom here. And the Optimus G Pro takes advantage of Android's swipe-like gesture typing pretty well. And although it's not really a fully-fledged virtual assistant like Google Now or Apple Siri, I really found LG's voice command to be pretty useful. Another pretty nifty app is LG's QSlide, which basically allows you to pop out certain apps and use them over the home screen. You can pop out the calculator, notepad, calendar, and even watch videos while you're swiping through home screens. So that's pretty awesome. And you can also change the opacity of the QSlide apps with the slider up top. But I did find it weird that you can't expand QSlide video. 
And of course we can't forget the IR blaster which is pretty much becoming standard on modern smartphones that allows you to use your phone as a remote for your television. Now although the G Pro takes good pictures I was a little disappointed that they didn't lend credence to the quality you'd expect from a 13 megapixel sensor. Even on video colors were a bit duller than natural and details seemed to get lost more often than not. Blowing up pictures I actually got more detail out of a smartphone with an 8 megapixel sensor than I did from the 13 megapixel camera on the Optimus G Pro. However, it's still a great camera for a smartphone. And with all these bells and whistles one can't help but to wonder about battery life. And the Optimus G Pro doesn't disappoint with its 3140 milliamp hour battery. You'll easily get through a full day's use with room to spare. And with that I definitely recommend the LG Optimus G Pro to any anyone who wants a smartphone with a lot of real estate and snappy and reliable performance at every turn. So that's it for my inspection of the LG Optimus G Pro guys. Let me know what you think of this beast of a phablet, the LG Optimus G Pro down in the comment section below. And also if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button as it helps me out more than you know. And if you want the latest and greatest in tech news and reviews, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm Inspector Gadget and I will see you on the other side. Peace.